Hmm. Okay. All right. First agenda. We got some housekeeping to do. I got a lot of emails this morning that people were trying to use the uh, site and they couldn't get the promo code. So what I'm going to do is extend the opportunity for you to get into the program until Labor Day. Hopefully I get this sorted out. And if we don't get that sorted out, then what you can do is email me at glendon at savagefinance.org and I will send you an invoice. Because let me go ahead and tell you why you want to get into it. Today, I've been sitting around thinking about 2023 taxes. And let me tell you something that I'm getting ready to do. And I'm going to do a training on this. As you know, I have reference because I'm going to go check on it today and see if it's, you know, where it is in production. But I'm getting a 2022 911 Turbo S Cabriolet, which by all stretch of the imagination doesn't fit the definition of a 6,000 pound vehicle, which you can buy and take depreciation on your taxes, right? So one of the things that I'm getting ready to do is focus on a lot of tax strategies, legal and legit tax strategies. And if you're in the intellectual property, if you're in the program, if you're in the corporate papers, if you're in the corporate toolbox, you will get this training free because you're already in the B school for hustlers ecosystem. So you're going to get this training free. Um, I don't have enough time because let me, let me tell you what my thinking was. We're still in the NFL preseason and I was thinking about doing the training Sunday, but we don't have, you know, I'm still thinking about that because today is Thursday. So we got Friday and Saturday and we can potentially have a training this Sunday on how to get into these esoteric tax saving strategies and we will get into it. Now, last night I had a live training, which I forgot to record. So there, <laughs> you will not be able to find that because I forgot to record it, but there will be probably more than likely a training this Sunday on how I'm going to get a 100% deduction off of this Porsche for the year 2022. 275,000. If you've been hearing me talk about it, I've got like $450,000 worth of deductions from the car rental business. So, you know, and this is something else too, because uh, I filed my taxes and believe it or not, the Internal Revenue Service could take up to six months to give a refund. I'm serious because it's set up where you can check your personal uh, tax refund. You, they've got an automated system, they take your identity, but you cannot check up on your corporate refund. So I just gotta sit and wait, or wait until I get some notification from the Internal Revenue Service. So this is something that you should be aware of before you start playing the corporate game. Also, I'm about to get into a lot of holding company training. Once again, if you're in intellectual property, if you're in B-School, if you're a paid member of B-School for Hustlers, you're probably going to get some serious discounts because I'm going to get into some business training that you will not find here on YouTube because, you know, most of these jokers on YouTube are not actual business people. They don't even have an LLC. They don't have a holding company. They have nothing. Once again, as I said in yesterday's video, there's a few people here on YouTube, the credit plug, the real estate trapper who actually show receipts and who know what they're talking about. But once again, we're going to get into a lot of training. And also we've got four months before 2023. 
And what we're gonna do is focus. Like I have a goal that everyone in the intellectual property school is gonna have an LLC before 2023. We're gonna double down, we're gonna talk about it. We're going to actually work on making sure that everyone has their LLC and their setup appropriately set up correctly because here's the thing there's millions of youtube channels and 99 percent of them are set up incorrectly incorrectly i'm going to show you a strategy that if you have a job you have a job and you do a youtube channel i can get you half or most of the money that you pay back in federal taxes once again these are legal legit strategies and one of the things is like, I got all my LLC paperwork and EIN stuff. Uh, America's a paperwork game. You gotta have your paperwork in order. Um, I got, I got this card right here, $32,000. Uh, in the training I showed that I have a $32,000 loan because my paperwork was in order. And we're going to really, really focus on getting your paperwork in order. There are many small businesses that don't have no paperwork, let alone it's sloppy. It's, it's a case of no paperwork because once again, we've got Leon, you know, I'm just trying to scratch up some stuff. I'm not trying to pay taxes. I'm not trying to have an LLC. I'm not trying to have, I don't want them to be up in my business. I just want to lay a little money on the side. If you have that mentality, you are screwed. You're missing so much opportunity. You're missing so many things because here's the thing. Like I said, with this, this is a FinTech. The carrot card is a FinTech company, right? So if you want to position yourself, because that's just the beginning. This is just the beginning. In the next five years, there's going to be credit cards. There's going to be loan products. There's going to be situations for people who have an LLC, EIN, business checking, and taxes. Once again, uh, I filed for, I filled in the application for a Bank of America business credit card. Guess what they asked me for? They asked me for my tax returns. This was an online application, so I don't know what's going on with that. I filled it out on the 24th. So I haven't heard anything from them. But once again, we're gonna have a heavy, 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 heavy emphasis on making sure that our paperwork is in order. Our paperwork is in order because once again, guys, like this ain't rocket science. This ain't rocket science, but once again, like last night, uh, I got really into it because you gotta do this stuff. You gotta file your LLC. You gotta file your for your EIN. You gotta get your business banking account. You gotta do that stuff. You gotta take these steps so you can position yourself. Cause like I said, what I feel is gonna happen, like, like I said, this carrot card, uh, I've seen a lot of people do reviews on the carrot card. Their limit wasn't as high as mine. You know what? Cause I do vaguely remember filling out the application and linking up to one of my checking accounts, if I remember correctly. And I got a $32,000 limit, right? So. What's going to happen for the people who go ahead and start a YouTube channel, get their business structure together, is in the future, there's going to be opportunities for funding. And like I said, uh, once again, and let me go ahead and be 100% transparent. I make so much damn money, I don't need funding. Let me say this again. I'm paying cash for the court. I'm paying cash for the, the Porsche. But because of the training that I'm going to do Sunday, that's going to be a $275,000 tax deduction. Now I know everyone with their CPAs and the CPAs says, there's no way, there's no way that he can buy a brand new Porsche and take it off as a tax deduction. Really? 
really, really. You guys, you guys, like, like I said, uh, when I worked at Panel Systems Unlimited, we had a CPA who was a shark. He was a CPA. He was a CPA who thought like a business owner, who thought like a hustler. He was very, very different. And I learned a lot from him. And once again, I guarantee you this strategy that I'm gonna lay out is 100% legal. It's 100% legit because it's using the law to set this up. The law as it stands now. And let me, let me go ahead and say something. You think they're gonna change these laws for corporations and LLCs? They ain't changing them. They ain't changing them. So if you wanna start playing the corporate game, if you wanna get into this, you wanna sign up for the program, you wanna be here for the training Sunday, because man, we gonna get into it. All right, so let's get into this video. Lessons learned from my landlord. I learned so much from this cat. Number one, number one lesson I learned from this cat was the power of ownership. This is why I am big upon ownership. You right now, there is this uh, wallow and I think he's one of the hosts of the podcast, A Million Dollars Worth of Game. I am really interesting of all these people who are hosting these business podcasts who don't really have a business. Their business is the business of the podcast, but they don't have a business beyond that. I find that to be really interesting. There was a strategy that's put up. You create a trust. You have the trust have hold the holding company, and then the holding company manages the companies. But see, here's the thing. You cannot put a holding company in an irrevocable trust. Now, there's a revocable trust and there's an irrevocable trust. My landlord had an irrevocable trust. Now, what are the differences between a revocable trust and the irrevocable trust? If you have a revocable trust, that means that you can change it anytime that you want to. So let me go ahead and give you the story of someone that I personally know. Someone, a man of means. Uh, one night he was out with his buddies and he got drunk. And he ended up running into someone and killing two people. It was a family of four, two of the members of the family died. So they came after his insurance company and they came after him. But guess what? This person had an irrevocable trust in all of the assets that were in the irrevocable trust could not be touched in the lawsuit, could not be touched. Now, I know of a situation, this isn't someone I know, who had a revocable trust and he got into a situation where he got sued and because the trust was revocable, all of the assets in the trust were on the table for the lawsuit. So the, once again, the lack of details and the lack of clarity in this whole is, you know, rich folks do this and why not you? One of the reasons that you don't do this, you don't have no assets. You have no assets. Like I'm about to say something that's gonna be very, very conceited. Right now, I have three luxury cars in the garage. And the net worth, the asset values of these depreciating assets is about $270,000. I have more net worth in the parking garage than 70, 80% of America. And these are depreciating assets. So once again, I'm about to say something that's going to be bold. It may even be come across as a little reckless. You can't play the type of games that I play because you don't have no damn money. You have no assets. Once again, the asset base is going to increase when I get this new, this new, new, new to me, new, new, because no one's ever driven it before when I get into it, Porsche and the Porsche is $270,000. That's going to dramatically increase the depreciating asset base, but because 
I'm playing the holding company game, that is a $270,000 tax deduction. See, that's how you play the game. Like, once again, all of these folks online who don't have a business, who don't have a holding company, who've never been in real business, who've never served real customers, I've sold physical products, I've sold digital products, I've sold tangible products, I've sold intangible products, I'm in the intellectual property school. They can't teach you shit because they haven't done shit. That's me being reckless. That's me saying what I want to say because lessons I learned from my landlord. He had an irrevocable trust. He could not sell the buildings that were in the revocable trust. Now, here's the thing. If the beneficiaries of the trust wanted to sell the buildings and everyone who was a beneficiary agreed and they went back and they all sat down and they could change the terms of the trust, but it would take a lot and it's a very complicated process. But that's the difference. That's the difference that Wallow left out because once again, you cannot put a holding company in an irrevocable, well, an S corporation. You can put a holding company in a revocable trust, but only a human can own an S corporation. And that was one of the things that was mentioned in this little chat, that it was an S corporation. And a tr uh, uh, only a trust fund cannot own, a trust cannot own an S corporation. So one of the things I learned was the power of ownership. And also I've learned another lesson from my landlord, the power of being in business. My landlord had a manufacturing concern back in the day and he bought and developed my landlord was a developer he was him and another guy that developed most of mountain industrial business complex they developed most of that they developed like 70 percent of that so by being a builder and by taking ownership and once again ownership the concept of ownership is something that so many people are literally running away from in this day and age because they don't want to be responsible for nothing. Like I have three cars. That's a lot of responsibility. You know what's one of my things I gotta do? I gotta make sure I drive all three of my cars, like the Porsche and the BMW. I drive them every week. I have to remember to drive the Mercedes because if I don't, the battery's gonna die. The battery's gonna die. So I have literally gotta drive that probably much in the next three or four days. If I don't, the battery's gonna be dead next time I get into it. So there comes a cost with responsibility, but there also comes a level of freedom with responsibility. One of the things that I have learned from my landlord is power of ownership. You must be in business. I had many conversations with my landlord. My landlord did not own any stock, but he owned 35 cash producing businesses, buildings. He didn't own any stocks. My landlord died a multimillionaire, but he didn't own any stocks. He owned a lot of real estate. And one of the things that I see online, and I see this conversation quite frequently, the only way for the average person to get rich is the stock market or real estate. Now, I'm gonna tell you why that is being pushed. How does real estate work? You go to the bank, you get a loan, you buy the real estate, you rent it out, or you put it on a short-term rental site like Airbnb. You're not, you don't, you're not really doing a lot with real estate. You're not really doing a lot. Stocks, you buy stocks, you hold them, they go up, they go down. So this is why this is pushed because once again, I'm about to be a little reckless. Most people are looking for comfort versus actual success. 
I'm about to speak to the men folk. One of the things that perplexes me until I sat down and thought about it, why are there so many relationship channels on YouTube and the internet? The simplest thing in the world is getting some pussy. That should be so low on your list of things to do, things that you've done, that you shouldn't even have to think about how to get some pussy. That should be automatic. But because the average man is lazy, unmotivated, has no sense of urgency, this is why the average man gravitates to all of these relationship channels. Because there, there's one thing I saw that's very popular here on YouTube. Someone reacting to a video. This just this person that puts in their commentary, their two cents. Literally, this one dude whose channel is growing, he literally doesn't even talk that much. He pretty much lets these reaction videos play. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, why doesn't this type of content appeal to me? Because I'm getting pussy. I have no problems with women. I have no problems getting a fine woman to service me. I have no problems getting that. You know what I use my mental energy for? I don't use a lot of mental energy into relationships, how to get women. I don't even think about it. You know where my mental energy goes into? Creating new products, creating new businesses, growing my business. That's where the bulk of my mental energy is going. I don't even think about women. But the average man in 2022 the number of men who are not having sex has dramatically increased since the advent of Tinder. I want you to think about that. The average man level active sexual activity level is at an all time low. I'm about to tell you why. Because the average man has stepped back from his masculinity. The average man has stepped back from responsibility. The average man has stepped back from being a warrior. The average man has stepped back out of the masculine frame. The, mas the, the average man is just a bitch with a dick and balls. That's why the average man is fucking losing. You heard it here. The average man from now until the end of time is going to catch hell. He's not going to get any pussy. He ain't going to get any money. He's not going to get any respect. Because in all these reaction videos, who's being clowned? The average man. So once again, let's go ahead and examine this. All of this stuff is happening to the average man. If you have a modicum of intelligence that will tell you, I don't need to be average. I need to leave this average shit alone. But once again, the average man is lazy and unmotivated and has no sense of urgency. And this is something else I learned from my landlord. To build. My landlord had a manufacturing company and as his company grew and he needed new warehouse space, he didn't rent it. He built it from the ground up. He built his empire from the ground up. He built it from the ground up. And my landlord has been dead for a number of years, but guess what? A mountain industrial, his legacy is still standing. 
There are multiple buildings that he built with his own two hands. His legacy will be enduring for the next 300 years because he built something. And these are the lessons that I learned from my landlord. Number one, you must own something. Number two, you must be in business. Number three, you must build. You must build. You must build. My landlord was married to a woman probably 20 years younger than he was. That's something else I learned from my landlord because she was spry she wanted to be. You know this what was funny? She died within a year of him dying. I guess she missed him that much. But these are the lessons that I learned from my landlord. And here's the thing. I never sat down and went to dinner with my landlord. I literally had 20, 25 conversations with the longest conversation being 15 minutes. And all of you guys are out here, will someone mentor me? There are mentors all around you, but the job isn't for the mentor to hold your little hand. The mentor is supposed to show you the way. And my landlord showed me the way. He showed me the way. He's like, this is what you do. This is how you do it. Build, build, build. But once again, this isn't this message isn't for the average man because the average man is going to throw rocks at the computer screen the average man is going to look for time to play his video games the average man is going to look for a reason to seek comfort the average man instead of doing the internal work that is required where he can get the type of woman that he wants all he's going to do is sit here and commiserate with other average as losers on the internet and they're going to complain about women because here's the thing women are not that complicated women are not that complicated not that complicated at all but when you are a bitch with a dick and balls and you think like a bitch it's very hard for you to understand how to get a bitch because it's like I said, women are not complicated at all. They're not even close to complicated. But because the average man has a lower level of aggression, the average man, because when I was a kid, we used to fight for fun. We used to physically beat each other up for friend because that was that masculine aggression. We used to box, we used to wrestle. Men aren't doing that in now. You know, Remember the movie Fight Club? What's the first rule of Fight Club? There's no Fight Club. These guys were in there kicking each other's asses because it awakened something in them. And once again, this is why Andrew Tate is so popular because he is saying something. He He's like Archie Bunker. If you don't know who that is, Google Archie Bunker. Andrew Tate is the masculine Archie, well, Archie was no pussy. Archie was a, he was an old grouch, but Andre Tate is the Archie Bunker of today. He says all this wild stuff and he gets all this attention and he's making all of this money because people want to cancel him for saying the things that he wants to say. I find it very interesting, very interesting. But once again, the lessons learned from my landlord, you must own something. That ownership, ownership is a whole different level. And once again, this whole thing, having a trust, having a holding company, having multiple businesses. First of all, the average person is not gonna put that whole structure together. The average person ain't gonna put in the work. First of all, you got to understand the work that goes into setting up businesses. My storage auction business was probably the most physically and emotionally and intellectually draining business I ever had. You, you say, how so? First of all, when I went to the auction, 
I had to learn how to buy storage units and I had to be on my P's and Q's to properly buy storage units or I could lose a lot of money. So that right there was extremely mentally taxing, sizing up a unit, risking real money. Wait a minute, that's kind of like day trading. It, 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 a little bit, it's kind of like day trading. But once again, one of the things that you have to do is there are so many mentors and a lot of these mentors are not on the internet. There's a lot of people who have solid information who are extremely successful out here in the real world. Last night during the training, I showed the people a bunch of young, authentically successful people and they were not posing next to Ferraris. They weren't posing next to Ferraris. These were NFL players. You can Google their contract. You know they got millions of dollars. They're not posing next to Ferraris. They're not posted up. You know what their Instagram showed? Them at work. Them on the field. Different mentality. Different breed. But once again, the lessons I learned from my landlord are prescient. They're enduring. And the thing is, in 2023, we're going to start working on the empire. Because like I said, I'm not playing about, I'm about to start lighting a fire under people's asses. Because once again, you got to do this stuff. America is a paperwork game. You got to have your paperwork together. You got to have your LLCs. You got to have your EINs. You got to have your business. You got to have your paperwork together and you got to file taxes. You got to file taxes. Like I said, I applied for an American, for a Bank of America business credit card, and they asked for my tax returns. They asked for my tax returns. This was just the application. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm just going to sit and wait. And then in this month, I'm going to be applying for some American Express business products. One of the things is I kind of have to let it cool off because I put in so many apps this year. Um, but I feel I'll be good with American Express because my credit score is strong and my credit, you know, I've spent a lot of money with my American Express card. I've had this card. I had this card uh, two months and I have spent $40,000 on it. And this card, I have spent twenty thousand. So I feel I'm gonna be good stead with American Express because I spent sixty thousand dollars with them in two months, and I'm not carrying the balance. So I feel that I'm gonna get those business credit card products. But once again. You gotta play the game to have a chance to win. So once again, I'm letting you know um, because there was some difficulty. I've extended the deadline to Labor Day. And if you try to buy something, you can't send me an email at glendon at savagefinance.org and I will send you an invoice and then you can get access to the course before the price goes up. Once again, this is how we're rocking. This is what we're rolling. This is what we're doing. Okay. And this weekend, probably three or four o'clock, I'm going to shape it up. I'm going to do a live training on how I'm going to buy a 2022 Porsche and take a $275,000 legitimate, reasonable, factual business deduction. So you want to be there for that. You want to be there for that. So I will see you guys in the next one.
Thank you.